brothers and sisters, once again, uh, my long-time friend, Mr. Organize, this opportunity uh, so that uh, gives me opportunity to exchange my own experience and also to learn some of your own experience. That's mainly through as a question and answer like that. So it seems to be very helpful to enrich some of it. Enrich. I think both sides. And then also as you brought an occasion meeting with many, many long time friend. As a human being. Uh, not like some other animal. Once we develop friendship, that friendship remain till our death. And from uh, those philosophical sort of the tradition who accept re rebirth, then I think our uh, relations, once we develop within this lifetime, that sort of influence of that relation may remain uh, thousands, thousands sort of the rebirth. But Perhaps uh, when some of us become Buddha, then we recall, oh, such, such eons before we met such, such place, isn't it? It's very possible. Uh, so we have to compete each other, who reached first there. Whether Guru remained because of reached first or those Chela. I think Guru, according to present circumstances, too, too busy. So, from that viewpoint, I may remain behind. <laughs> so, today, so I think good thing is, real, I mean, the uh, usual, my sort of the root text, the Shandadawa's book, left there, Dharamsala. <laughs> Not with me. <laughs> so, just I hired one, one old book from someone. Yeah, they're done. Borrowed. Oh, borrowed, oh, like that. <laughs> this is one commentary. Uh, our last meeting, just after the uh, 2000 10th March crisis. Now, two years passed. By the way, two years passed. Oh, one thing, my gold, gold bladder now no longer here. <laughs> so, Guruji's body not complete. <laughs> but okay, very, because of the very, very healthy body. Okay. I'm just wondering, among the, the, uh, what's it, the audience, those people who missing is that same organ. I, I want to know. Anyone? Oh, one, one there. Two, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry. Oh, they did it. So since that operation, when I give some public talk, uh, India also in, in, in the West. Uh, so usually I is telling the amount of audience, some people have uh, some kind of belief, Dalai Lama have some kind of miracle power. That's of course nonsense. And then some people you see, believe Dalai Lama have some kind of healing power. Now that is, since my sort of surgery, now scientifically prove Dalai Lama have no healing power. <laughs> so it is clear, isn't it? <laughs> like that. So there are some differences between previous our gathering and today, like that. 
So, why still we are talking about these uh, some ideas which developed in this country, I think almost 3,000 years. And then particularly since Buddhism uh, developed in this country more than 2,000 now around 600. And then Nagarjuna, and then particularly this Shantadeva. And many centuries ago, they happened. Uh, they, they come, they came, and although as a human being, they passed away, but they remained where? Shava, Shava. They left a legacy. Or they left you know, some of their or should they thought, uh, written on paper, I think palm tree. So these very, very ancient sort of teaching of India, but still relevant to this world. How? Not in form of ritual, but these are, I think, very, very I think, useful to open our mind and to see the reality. I think many man-made problems actually is it due to lack of fuller knowledge about the reality. So they inspired nobody want trouble, but ourselves created a lot of trouble. Not want, but because of lack of, I mean, because of ignorance. Ignorance here means lack of knowledge about the reality. So these texts uh, still very useful to know the reality. Jimmy Paulas, this is Sunday. Oh, Rajiv, who is that person? Jane. Huh? Mr. Jane. Jane. Jane Ray. No, Mr. Jane. Mr. Jane, huh? What did you do with Honshan? Ninja. Shanukasa. Ravindra Varma. Ravindra Varma. Oh, Ravindra Varma. Uh, he reminds me of our late friend Rabindu Burma. Hmm? So, so I think the firstly, uh, I think the importance of calm mind. I think two things, because of two benefit from calm mind. Number one is a calm mind brings inner peace. Uh, that also very helpful to maintain the healthy body. And then calm mind, uh, another calm mind, I think immense sort of helpful to function about our human intelligence to investigate, uh, to analyze the reality. Without calm mind, disturb, disturbed mind then cannot see the reality properly because disturbed mind then often 
develop biased sort of view. And often, then you see things appears actually mental projection. One uh, old scientist, his name is His name is One American, oh, I think his age, when I met him, his age uh, already 84 something. You know? Ah. No, no, no. Not, not that one. Another one. Whether he uh, alive or not, I don't know. So, some time ago, I think at least five, six years ago, uh, he actually wrote a book. Uh, the title, uh, title mentioned, uh, We Prisoner of Anger. Prison of Anger. Something like that. Hmm? So he, uh, of course, not Buddhist, not religious minded, I think. You see, he mentioned when we develop anger, and then the object which we develop anger, our anger focusing, you see that? appears very negative, uh, but the 90% of that negativeness is actually mental projection. So similarly, too much attachment. A again, the positive sort of appearance from that object, again, I think a large portion, uh, mental projection. So as soon as the mental projection involved, you can't see the reality. So calm mind, I think two things. The benefit from calm mind, two things. Person, himself, herself, with calm mind, much of peace, happier. And the physical body as the element also function normally. And then most important, that provides the proper functioning of our brain and we can see the thing more objectively, like that. <laughs> so now, uh, irrespective of whether believer or non-believer, I think uh, worthwhile make some uh, effort to bring calm mind. Then our life, of course, uh, uh, some form of problem, some form of trouble, including one's own body, sort of the, what's it, the imbalance, uh, creation, and what is creation like old age or illness, and finally death, is bound to happen. Then environment. Also, you see, there are a lot of problems. So, under such circumstances, if there is a way to keep calm mind, and then worthwhile, make attempt. Uh, so, so now, how to bring calm mind? I think we have to look the real sort of source of disturbances uh, one extreme self centered attitude right? no. self grasping that also is one source create disturbances more grasping i i i they say more possibility disturbances. Little lo uh, loose way. That's, that's too much of center, sort of, because of the grasping attitude, less, uh, the less disturbances. Disturbances happen, but the response from your side, much of that, softer. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are It seems faith, according to the theistic religion, 
is to believe creator god so single pointed sort of faith towards god creator uh, so that that means the total submission right total submission to the god so that loosening this extreme self centered sort of kasuda ka grasping attitude that's one way uh, then buddhist way for approach uh, is the of course like jainism and buddhism and also some one ancient sangya philosophy one part of sangya philosophy hello uh no concept of creator but ultimately one self consider creator like that so it's into therefore law of causality law of karma everything depend on its own action uh action here physical action verbal action mental action so due to one's own action the difference of result come pain pleasure neutral uh so now here buddhism uh the emphasis concept of anatma so that is the uh, aiming loosening the tight sort of or uh, grasping self i i so all major tradition uh you see aiming or i think recognize openly or unopened way indirectly i think realize one source of the source of the problem is self grasping strong i so you utilize different sort of method to reduce that uh then another way uh more sense of concern of others as a well being uh so that also sort of very very sort of strong sort of method to reduce as of that self grasping self grasping not necessarily just feeling of i i is there but you see uh, the too much sort of the self centered attitude it, it often you see bring a attitude regardless others well being and then extreme way uh, in order to get some benefit to oneself bully on other harm on other cheating other so more compassionate attitude respect others right respect others desire so more sort of sense of that kind reduce the dangerous self centered attitude clear uh, when we say selflessness does not mean the denying existence of self self is there but you see uh, and also you see the, it is necessary to keep the sense of strong self is necessary sense of strong self is the basis of will will power determination self confidence uh, without that uh, life become difficult and also from the spiritual view point Uh, the spiritual progress also then difficult without a, a, st- a sense of strong self right but we we have to make distinction right distinction negative sort of sense of s- s- self and a 
positive sense of self. Uh, so that's I think. So, so these are different method. So now, non-believer. At another word, I think what say, secular way. According uh, Indian Indian tradition, secularism does not mean rejection or disrespect of religion, but rather respect all religions and also respect non-believer. I think last year uh, I had audience, uh, as are Atwani. Uh, so we just did a casual talk. And then he mentioned the one sort of reason for success of democracy in this country is the thousand years in this country respect different views is there. So he made one example, Chawaka. This is Chawaka, uh, who, who sort of, uh, who's, uh, School of thought, right? From the school of thought, you see the nihilism, usually we call nihilist, nihilist view, denying existence of next life, or denying any spirituality like that, or denying existence of God or these things. So, rest of the different school of thought consider that school of thought is nihilist, nihilism. nihilist. So condemn or criticize. Yet those people who hold that view refer Rishi. Rishi is Sage. Ah. Sage. Sage. So that means respect. So he mentioned that. So it is true. So those Chavaka in ancient time, even Buddha's time, they already there. So these are non-believer, ancient non-believer. So there should, should not be differences, ancient non-believer and modern non-believer, same. <laughs> so you see, uh, the Indian tradition respect those non-believer in the ancient time. So why not today? We must respect non-believers. Uh, then the non-believer also want Peace of mind, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, uh, in order to keep uh, calm mind, uh, sometimes people use what called tranquilizer, sorry, tranquilizer. Yeah. Uh, some people this is relying on drugs or relying on alcohol like that. And also, I think ordinary people, I think normal people, uh, in order to keep this peace of mind. Even those retired old people used to go to different places as a tourist. Then new place, uh, new hotel, new room, and maybe little complaint, oh, this hotel is very dirty, or just that kind of little complaint. Otherwise, it's a, a new place. So, less attachment. Marbella, <laughs> go here and there and enjoy. Uh, daytime, enjoy seeing new things, new songs or something new, and then tired, and the rest, the night rest. <laughs> so <laughs> life go like that way. So that also, you see, trying to seek some kind of peace of mind, isn't it? Uh, uh, so everybody, no, no differences, believer or non-believer, and believe this religion, that religion, no differences, all want something good. good not necessarily money, uh, but here, mainly, it's just some kind of inner peace. Even animal also is a want inner peace. Although their ability is very limited, but according to their, because of their limited sort of ability, they also try to keep because of that peace, inner peace. So my main, uh, so now the latest scientific finding, as I mentioned before, 
I say, now among the scientists, out of their research, years, years, with instrument, I begin to realize importance of mental state. For health also, the mental state is very, very crucial factor for health. <coughs> Constant fear, anger, that these are very bad for our health. And some scientists even mentioned uh, too much an constant anger uh, and fear. Of course, anger and fear, very close connection. More fear, more possibility of anger. More anger, more possibility of fear. So, so therefore, uh, so this is anger and fear constantly occur. This actually eating our immune system. And other hand, compassion, spirit of forgiveness, these things are very, very helpful to maintain our immune system. So one, one story I, I want to share with you. When I carried that surgery, uh, so one doctor, one specialist, is described me as a, a young patient. And I told him, oh, I'm not a young patient. I already uh, was 73. So then the doctor say, says, yes, yes, I know your age, but your physical condition looks like an age 60. He mentioned like that. So therefore, he described me as a young patient. Like that. So here, of course, maybe Tibetan Samba maybe uh, makes little differences, maybe. <laughs> you know, after 59, then of course, you see getting Samba difficult, and then eventually I forget eating Samba. So that way, I think, I think more than one decade remained like that. Then eventually, uh, I felt I'm Tibetan. And also, I have the name of Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama. And, and also, you see, uh, I advise you see, some people, or somebody is a very, a very good nutrition or something. So while I advise other people, eating somebody is good, then I myself must start eating Samba. <laughs> oh. Then, gradually, uh, when one occasion I was in Ladakh, so initially, I take Samba, then almost always some trouble, kasa, motion. motion survey, motion, motion or something. Motion. No? Uh, so then I scientifically, I practice uh, first, first few days, one spoon full of samba. Then after one week, two spoonful. Uh, then uh, after that, three, four, then eventually full like that. So nowadays I, so I always used to take a samba at breakfast, like that. Oh, another sort of story. One occasion, uh, when I travel in different places, a samba also with me. So one time in Singapore airport, you see, they opened, they saw, they saw the samba. They thought, oh, this is maybe drug. <laughs> oh, because of cooking, sorry, cooking. <laughs> so the police, you see, they, because of, Take, uh, take out the way. They, they took and they examined <laughs> like that. <clears throat> so in any way, uh, there's no other sort of, I think, major factor. Uh, but I think one, I think, factor is I feel my mind comparatively quite peaceful, quite calm. I think at that time, oh, oh, Rajiv, already gone. No, not here. Oh, okay. I think at that time I mentioned, the, although the, uh, after 10th March, uh, 2008, when I give some sort of lecture here, my mind, a lot of disturbances, a lot of anguish, a lot of worry. 
but during that period, no single night uh, sort of lost my sleep. No, always sleep as usual. So daytime, a lot of sort of anxiety, a feeling of helplessness, hopelessness. But as far as sleep is concerned, no disturbances. So it it's indicates, I think, deeper level, my mind still quite calm. I feel like that. Hopefully. <laughs> so that much I can tell you, according to my own experience. Calm mind, deep level. Service level, yes, disturbance come. But come, go, come, go. And Shanta Deva sort of advice if when face problem, if the problem can avoid, then no need to worry, make effort. If the problem no possibility to overcome, then no use worry. Very realistic advice. Very, very realistic. So like that, this kind of sort of what's the thinking. Immense help to keep calm mind in deep down. So you also, same human being, same ability, same mind, same emotion. Only difference is whether pay more attention or not. That's the only difference. Otherwise, same. From the Buddhist viewpoint, we, everybody has Buddha nature. Buddha seed, everybody has that. So, uh, wherever I go, I always try to sort of make clear the, so the peaceful, so the potential, right? Potential, right now, or a seed of peace of mind already there, irrespective of whether believer or non believer, whether believe this or that. No differences. So that's my number one commitment to, to promote our inner value, mainly compassion. And India's thousand year old tradition, ahimsa, non violence. Non violence, not out of fear. Restrain, harming other out of fear is not non violence. Non violence, or no, uh, remain indifferent what is happening. That are not non-violence. Non-violence means you have the ability to, to harm other, but uh, with love, with respect, resisting harming other. That's non-violence. So non-violence is a kind of sign of strength, self-confidence. Non-violence, not at all signs of weakness, no. Like that. So India's tradition. Or so so they restrain harming other. There must be motivation. The motivation is love other, respect others' well being, others right. Uh, with that, restrain harming other. So same attitude, harming yourself. Nobody wants that. So similarly, if I harm other, the other also have the same feeling which I have. So, reasoning that way, Christian harm other. So that's non-violence. So non-violence is action. Action must be based on motivation. So here motivation is compassion. So non-violence or ahimsa and compassion is something like kasoda, two one coin. Of right. coin. Two ah. sides of the coin. Two, uh, two, kasa. two sides. Two. Two, sides of the coin. Uh, two face of the coin, like that. So, wherever I go, I promote uh, what's it, ahimsa, based on compassion. Then second, my commitment, promotion of religious harmony. That also in this tradition. So therefore, I describe myself as a messenger of India.
and also now last 51 years I lived this country. So my body survived by Indian dals and chapati and rice. Uh, and my mind, uh, some, kind, some, 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 some kind of sort of that wisdom, you see, come from Nalanda masters and ultimately Buddha. So that also comes from India. So therefore, I describe not only message of India, Indian thought, but also son of India. So that expression irritate <laughs> some some the Chinese leaders there. They one of their accuse accuse right, accusation. Now the Lama openly state son of India. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, see. Uh, last, so they almost now seven decades, well, seven decades, nothing learned from Chinese tradition. <laughs> Everything from India's tradition. Oh, except I learned some part of Marxism, that from Chinese. So in early, early 50, 54, 55, when I was in China, so much attraction towards Marxism. So at that time, I asked Chinese official, concerned official, I want to join Chinese Communist Party. So then they advised me, oh, better to wait. So I think that advice is either correct. <laughs> <laughs> so indirectly, they, I think they felt well, sooner or later their ideology may collapse. <laughs> so better to wait. <laughs> So, so here, at this sort of meeting also, part of my two commitment, promotion of religious harmony, promotion of uh, secular ethics. So each of you here, I think maybe about 200, 200 people, naturally, I think a few hundred uh, of the friends, then each friend, another 10 person, another sort of, uh, say, more people. So that's the way uh, to Kasota. Spread. Kasota. Spread. To spread or to promote these values. The religious harmony cannot buy, buy but must develop here, mutual respect. Admiration and non violence also cannot buy, I cannot produce by mission, uh, but strong conviction non violence is mutual destruction. Uh, violence always brings more sort of negative the side effect. So, knowing these things and deliberately choose non-violent way. Family level problem, even individual level problem. Sometimes some ideas, two contradictory ideas, too much stuff there, and sometimes uh, nervous breakdown, sorry, yes. nervous breakdown, sometimes suicide. That also some kind of inner violence, isn't it? Uh, and the family level or community level, like that. So, it is also there. Uh, in order to, Kasurda, in order to, Kasurda, proper member of our group, please keep your mind till your death these two responsibilities promotion of human value, promotion of religious harmony that you should commit, okay? Then I call you spiritual brother. If you do not do that, um, I will omit your name. <laughs> Suki is red. <laughs> is it? What do you think? <laughs> so it is our common, sort of, common responsibility. We are part of six million human beings. 
we have quite enough problem. Uh, the problem due to release different name, extra, also extra problem. And we all have this deep potential here, but nail it that and complain, complain, complain. No use. Must realize inner potential and utilize that. So it is our common interest or common responsibility. So that's one thing. Then the uh, the Buddhist or the uh, Buddhist sort of view in order to know the reality. Right. I think two levels. One level. Now I think uh, the the word, the philosophical term, but dependent in arising. So this concept, two levels. One conventional level. One more deeper level. Conventional level, things are interdependent. Things are interconnected. Obviously, everything, uh, everything is always. All the phenomena which changing uh, entirely depend on its own causes and conditions. So, uh, including sort of pains and pleasure, these also uh, kind of, I mean, these also belongs to the uh, phenomena which is changing. So, pains and pleasure also entirely depend on its own causes and conditions. Uh, one cause, so that, I mean, any event just what can happen, just one cause is impossible. Many causes and many factors involved. So that's the reality. Usually, you see, we look just one single event and appears independent, absolute, so we mentally also they grasp something like independent or absolute. So anger develops that way. Attachment also develops that way. So once we know that event due to many other factors, then there is no independent target of anger. Anger must, must have independent, absolute tiger, because of the target, target. Of course, I love uh, former president, Mr. Bush. Oh, wonderful person, really. Uh, but his, some of his policy, even, even, to him, even, even to him also, is, I, one time I, I mentioned, I expressed, I love you, but some of your policy, I have great reservation. I mentioned to him, and he, uh, not sorry, not you know, like that. So I love him. But, you know, when the Iraq uh, problem started, I think after the uh, awful event in New York and Washington, what's it, September 11th, uh, then people's mind, or ultimately Saddam Hussein, that's absolute independence of target. So once Saddam Hussein, Kazoda, remove. Then everything okay. That kind of attitude. So this violent method start. They actually not that simple. Many things interrelated. So new administration, of course, I also have the recently I have the audience of Obama. Very nice person. Non white president. <laughs> I think first time, isn't it? Uh, very nice person, very nice. Uh, so the new administration now have to have to solve this problem. We started from previous administration. <laughs> so in any way, so these I think from from Buddhist viewpoint, the 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 
viewpoint of Pratit Samupant. So these wrong policy happen, not necessarily bad motivation, but a sincere motivation. But they are very method to see the reality very kasoda, very narrow way. So they can't see the implication, wider implication. So that's conventional level. Once we have the concept of Buddhism, or good or bad, something we want, or something we want, get it off the way, get it off. You see, both cases, uh, as soon as we look at then our mind automatically whitened, whitens. So it can see the holistic. So in the economy field, health field, ecology field, politics, international relations, I think everywhere, it is very, very helpful to look the, uh, in order to know the reality, look from wider perspective, from distance, from holistic way. It's very important. So uh, one level of conventional level, but it's important, immense help to develop wider kasuta, wider perspective. Then, then another level, deeper level, Patitsumpant, uh, means uh, finally things exist due to discrimination. Right? mental designation. So that means there is no uh, independently, uh, objectively exist. Ultimately, things are uh, exist due to mental designation. So that view helps to reduce the grasping independent existence. Something good or absolutely good. Something bad, absolutely bad. Both obj the object side and oneself also. Independent self. So that helps to increase these or say the destructive emotions. That we, we call fundamental ignorance, like that. So the concept of Patit two ways helping us to see the reality, conventional level or multiple level. So the first conventional level, Patit that's common in Pali tradition as well as Kasajoti, uh, Sanskrit tradition. The second one, although briefly mentioned in Pali tradition also, but more detail, more sort of serious discussion about that in the Sanskrit tradition. And in that field, Nagarjuna really made immense sort of contribution about that concept. So now this book, Shantadeva's book, of course the, when you concerned the people you ask me uh, what karuta, what text, then, then I thought the Shantadeva's book may be good. Of course this uh, will not sort of uh, finish at one, one, se one session of Karuta, a few days. But start, let us start this year, then hopefully uh, annually we can we can sort of, we can carry continuously. Uh, maybe some old some old face may may disappear, <laughs> but some new face will will also that appear. will appear. Right. appear. So in any way, it's a life should go. That's life way. Right. Go like that way. <laughs> so so now this this text. 
as a form of introduction of Buddha Dharma. Uh, it seems to see a start the, from ninth chapter. Now everybody use that, that text. To what? Because the way. Does everybody have the text? No. Oh. Good. Sattva Charya Avatara. Shanta Dewa's book. No. No, 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 no. Shanta Dewa's book, they do it. Guide to the Bodhisattva way of life. Or Bodhisattva way of life. Kasha Dewa, Kasha Dewa. So, ninth chapter. A few shalokas at, at the beginning of ninth chapter. I, I want to explain. Oh, now the trust of Chiglava, trust of the Chiglava, and the thing got the Deshi Chuji Kungas, Churchy Dishua, Deshi Chuji Kunga, Sajat Hansat. No, look. So uh, before starting the ninth chapter, um, I would like to um, get you back to the first chapter where it begins with the homage, uh, saying respectfully, I prostrate myself to the Sugatas who are endowed with Dharmagaya. Mm -hmm. So what is the meaning of Dharmagaya? Uh, and what is the meaning of the Sukkata, the worship, Sukkata? Uh, its meaning is Gautadi Tandadi Kasurpage, Ta, Tume, Judicheva, Nyor Shivena, Devas, Tedevuta, Tedevu Sara. Any section, Tedrasa, Mondo Cheve, Mondo Durbe, Dor Shepas. So Sugata here uh, means that uh, someone has reached uh, that level of um, blissfully reached that level and uh, has uh, actualized that level through uh, the, uh, the blissful uh, state. Uh, by overcoming the suffering and its causes. Mm -hmm. So in order to know that, uh, uh, we have to think, we have to investigate uh, what is, this, what is the uh, suffering, what is the source of suffering. Uh, suffering here, suffering means experience. Uh, there are two, there are three kinds of suffering. Suffering of suffering, and suffering of change. Then? Pervasive uh, existential condition suffering. Uh, so three levels of suffering. So now causes of that, so now I think obviously, they like pain. Uh, even animals, realize there's suffering, do not want. Uh, then suffering of change uh, is the certain sort of what's it, pleasure when we uh, get something like a beautiful sort of what's the Seeing. Ka. Seeing. Ka. No. Or a beautiful sound, a taste, smell like that. You see, we get some kind of satisfaction, pleasure. But it's the same, sort of, for example, the same music. You see, at initially, very beautiful. As soon as you, you hear that, you, see, you feel very calm and peace, or very, no. or, or deep satisfaction. If you hear that, Day and night. <laughs> then I think 
uh, naturally, you see, you develop a desire, oh, oh, how awful that, stop that. <laughs> oh, that kind of the feeling. So that means the same object, but your attitude change. So the same object, some period, produce some pleasure, satisfaction. But the same object, due to certain circumstances, you see, uh, it, it creates stumbu or irritation, like that. So the, so the object side, very nature, is kasotati, do it to make change. It is a condition uh, which uh, is a catalyst for uh, the changeable suffering. Of money also. Uh, I think when poor person is become a little wealthier, wealthier person, feel very happy. And then millionaire, then billionaire, uh, think only that level, or only, only think money, 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 then I think that person still want more and more, and more jealousy, more sense of competition, uh, and with that, I think usually you see corruption, I think more available among the Kazota, uh, the wealthier people. I think the beggars or poor people, I don't think it's much corruption. Uh, the ordinary people, I think, much less jealousy, isn't it? Uh, among uh, among uh, the poor people, among beggars, maybe a little, little sort of competition or a little sort of uh, jealousy. Otherwise, not much basis, jealousy. Uh, but more wealthier family, more jealousy. Uh, and jealousy brings uh, desire to harm, harm them, to stop their progress, these things. Uh, so therefore, the, uh, sometimes wealth, initially you feel something like very precious, something like God. But eventually, that same sort of object creates more worry, more anxiety, more frustration. And money destroy friendship, even uh, the brother sisters. It it often happen when the family economically poor. Genuine friendship, genuine brother, genuine sense of brother sisters become a little wealthier than suspect each other. Uh, as soon as suspicion come, friendship destroy. Friendship entirely based on trust, mutual respect. So the sense of competition, negative competition, positive competition, okay, negative competition, I think destroy all trust. So like that. So therefore, these are in the cat second category, uh, suffering of change. Now third level. All these uh, depend on Kazoda. I think firstly, the, our body. Of course, money is related to the body, not mind. False satisfaction developed in the, in the mental level, but mainly physical comfort. Like that. You see, man, many of these sort of things actually some kind of satisfaction actually entirely depend on sensorial kazoda. Perceptions. Ah. Perceptions. Sensorial, at the sensorial level. Uh, uh, like some satisfaction. Uh, hearing music. You see, that satisfaction depend on hearing kazoda. Sensorial experience. Seeing beautiful things and get some pleasure. That also depends on. So, smell, touch, taste, all these, some satisfaction at the mental level, depend on sensorial experience. So, so long the sensorial levels of some experience there, that mental level satisfaction there. Sensorial level stop, no longer there. 
So more durable, rest, durable sort of pleasure or satisfaction uh, on mental level must come through mental itself. Like faith, not depend on sensory. So through reasons or through some sort of experience, certain faith, firm faith, is mental level, not depend on sensory. So people usually do not know, I think, lack of ex experience. They seek deeper satisfaction from mental level. So I think animal, difficult. But we human beings, because of this intelligence, we have the capacity to develop a certain sort of source of kasunta joyfulness on mental level itself. Faith, compassion, then also analytical meditation. Also, you see, entirely on mental level, it brings immense sort of source of joyfulness, satisfaction. So analytical meditation, not necessarily on religious terms, right? But any field, a certain thing is in there, analyze and think, thinking, thinking, mental level. Uh, you, you can get some kind of deeper satisfaction on mental level. So, there was a said that. Oh, now is the cause of that kind of suffering. suffering. Oh, So with regards to the uh, third type of suffering that is always referred to, uh, that which is the pervasive conditioned existential suffering, um, it is a suffering which comes about as a result of um, the karma and delusions. Uh, and particularly uh, the, in Buddhist terms, we use the term the contaminated or impure karma and delusions, um, which bring about the psychophysical aggregates. So that is uh, basically that psychophysical aggregates, which uh, the, the psychophysical aggregates which come about as a result of the contaminated karma and delusion is termed as uh, that the th third type of suffering. Mm -hmm. So that. Uh it's a different form of suffering, all changing nature, so must be caused the conditions. Now this question, of the, what causes of this suffering? And then particularly, the, in order to uh, feel the possibility of cessation of these seas of this suffering, uh, we must investigate the cause of that suffering, whether can be eliminated or not. Now, now this is the key factor uh, for noble truth. It's the first noble truth, suffering, truth of suffering, second, truth of cause. So unless uh, we develop clear sort of awareness, possibility of elimination of this cause of suffering, it is impossible to develop conviction about third, because uh, Niruda, Niruda, because uh, of truth of secession. Uh, without proper awareness about the possibility of that, then the effort follow mark or a path impossible. An area path, just just a word, right? Uh, uh, Arya path or the noble noble path, no. then just 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 a word. No. So the key thing is we must think, or analyze, or investigate whether there is possibility of elimination of source of suffering. So now we have to know what is the source of suffering. The 
karma or one thing karma is action action uh, now here the suffering is part of experience so mental thing the external matter causing pains and pleasure uh, but pleasure and pain itself is part of mind mental experience so the ultimate source of that experience must be part of mind so now the the emotions so positive emotion causing pleasure negative emotion destructive emotion causing suffering so the very idea very demarcation positive and negative or destructive or constructive is due to result result something good everybody want so we call positive the result painful even animal do not want therefore it consider negative so cause of that also is destructive or negative uh, so now as i mentioned before uh, i think no sentient being deliberately create problem or suffering so suffering there and the suffering there yet nobody want no no sentient being want that if every sentient being have choose or power you see to get it to suffering then i think suffering will not be there so that means want do not so the want because of the over overcome okay. overcome suffering but suffering there due to ignorance i think we can say short sighted not seeing the deeper level so as i mentioned earlier the conventional level also you see we have to know the wider sort of sort of the she 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 touch with to share what no she sort of ground wider ground no no and then deeper level so so now there now the ninth chapter in order to now cause uh, analyze or investigate the possibility of elimination of the suffering or destructive emotion now ninth chapter i think rajiv Rajiv, I think, did you inform them that this is the text? If you mentioned, well then, I think very few have that copy. Oh, the different text is too. Do you have it? Do you have this? Please show to them. Oh, very good. Good, good. 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 not the real text okay 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 <laughs> sorry not that text oh. i i think the shandor's text maybe i think of course i mentioned i i think i i mentioned before uh, whether you there or not you see the this will not finish so one one or that's what a few days so let us start this year then perhaps i think annually uh, if you are not boring then i think annually we can carry is in this kind of sort of a session then we can go uh this is chapter to chapter or chapter by chapter yes mm. like that and in ninth chapter some non some school of thought about non buddhist i myself knowledge very limited so it is wonderful a teacher without knowing the subject properly or making some lecture that's wonderful <laughs> oh. so ninth chapter now some some books ninth chapter Uh, 
Yalandida tamcha ni tube shirup tanu songs. So the ninth chapter begins um, by saying all these branches of the doctrine the powerful lord expounded for the sake of wisdom. Uh, so here wisdom means mainly now the in order to know the reality on deeper level. Uh, Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That the to be sure of the song is the day in the industry or the in where Jim Zendi to make us our day, Mombe Chavez. The day in Duta, Momba Sayagi, Nyambo, the Kares Lona. And so um, in the second line it says the powerful Lord expounded for the sake of wisdom. And uh, regarding the wisdom here, um, we are talking about wisdom which differentiates between uh, what's right and wrong correctly and uh, that goes against the distorted notion of things, um, uh, misconception about and uh, the, uh, the reason why we, uh, the, this re wisdom is, uh, has to be developed is in order to overcome the, uh, the, through this antidote, the wisdom that you uh, develop, uh, which serves as an antidote against uh, that of uh, ignorance, uh, which is the root of suffering. And uh, uh, we are here not uh, uh, the, the, for in order to have that antidote, uh, the, uh, only the skillful means or mean, the, the method part of the practices uh, is not uh, uh, what is regard, uh, referred to here, but uh, that of the wisdom, realizing things as uh, the, rea the reality as it is. Oh. Uh, uh. Down a share of the any other Tegisidagi, Kadachi, the Chen of the Yinu, Tudu, Kata, Tudu, the Mongba, the Nishan on a Gunzo Chinibe, Chug, Nelu, Mongba, Mongba Chick. Da, the Nelly Mongba Yoya, dear, Saw Saw the Chick Yinu. The Mituber, tell about Tom Rudani. Other church and tea in two motto conjure. Couldn't need motto conjure. Pashit's hard done. Talks about some time you do that. Nuns of tame was simple. Any Jane Gurwa. Nuns of tame was simple. Jane Niagi, Nero Chick. Remanisha, tell ya that you know the Jibbe Loy Niagi Mizane. Any Tandam Tabas, Tabani, I'm sure so. So here uh, in the uh, same verse, uh, verse number three and four says, What time? Deep four break. What time? Hmm? Hmm? Nice. Huh. 
Kosa, siapa? Nak kemangga cuci nang kau? Ah, kemangga cuci ni aja nang kita susun. Okay, okay. So the uh, the line four and five, uh, three and four in the first verse of the ninth chapter says, therefore they must generate this wisdom, who wishes uh, who wish to have an end of suffering. So the wisdom here, uh, as said earlier, is the wisdom which sees things, the ultimate nature of things as it is. Um, and uh, uh, we can also divide the, uh, make a distinction uh, in terms of the uh, ignorance. Um, ignorance uh, on the one level is ignorant, uh, ignorance about um, that of the conventional level of things, and uh, even that is uh, in turn rooted in the, the the former one, which is that ignorance about the uh, reality of things as they are, and so uh, because of this, uh, we have the ultimate uh, ignorance in term in relation to the conventional level of things, and in ignorance in relation to ultimate uh, nature of things, and therefore. Therefore, in the Madhyamaka uh, uh, philosophical thought, uh, there is this distinction uh, between the two truths, and uh, the, the two truths, um, the, the, which are those of the conventional truth and the ultimate truth. Uh, conventional truth uh, is that truth which we can accept um, uh, through the renown, what is renowned in the world, um, without making any kind of uh, analytical, uh, I mean, critical analysis of things, uh, just accept the things as uh, uh, they are um, without uh, doing any kind of examination of them. And uh, that is the conventional level of truth. And then um, when you go beyond that level, um, uh, you have the nature of things, um, the, uh, what is known as the, uh, the nature of phenomena. Uh, when you go deeper into the deeper level of how they uh, actually exist um, and reflect on them, then uh, we find that uh, there, there is this ultimate uh, truth um, which should be found through critical analysis of things uh, in order to find how things really exist. And therefore, uh, that uh, truth is uh, the truth, uh, ultimate truth, in, in other words, the reality as it is. Mm, yeah. That is what they say. They say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Nejabot Nangsam tell Chama Shavche, could Shiro Kundu, a Java Guru Chayondo. Chasa under the Najabot, tell a Jidin Namito, Kata, Kaza, Nature, Jidin, Jidin Pava, the Nature of Nisi Shedia Dinala, and Pajidi Shedu, that you send you with Chambe, to Shimju Ching, Jigti, Najabet, Nel Joros, a yoga cell, and that Jigti, turn Namala, Shavache, any. Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。Turnamalotjorva。
And uh, then uh, in the third verse, it says, there are two kinds of people are to be distinguished, meditative thinkers um, or yogis and uh, ordinary f uh, folk. The, now, here, uh, with regard to this uh, verse, um, we can make distinction between two different kinds of people, basically. Uh, those who uh, take things for granted as they are, uh, as they see them, without making any kind of investigation or in examination of them, and uh, on, uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, uh, those people who are beings who uh, do critical analysis of things, for example, the scientists, um, who are not just uh, satisfied with uh, what appears to them, the, the apparent, um, uh, uh, what is apparent to them, but they wish to go deeper into the, the nature of things. And uh, therefore, um, here when we talk about the, uh, the com or common or folk or ordinary folk and uh, the yogis, uh, common folks are those um, who uh, t the, uh, do not make any kind of examination of things, no, not any kind of um, call, uh, critical examination of things, but things uh, take the things as they are renowned. Whereas uh, in the, the yogis uh, here uh, can be understood as um, those who um, exert their mind on uh, uh, correctly on the meaning or objects uh, that they investigate. And within the yogis, there may be, again, those who are uh, more uh, focusing, those who more, uh, focus more on the, uh, the physical level of things and uh, do analysis of them, and uh, those who do analysis of the mind and uh, check what kind of uh, thought processes and all the, uh, are going on in them and so so forth, and within the second category of the yogis, we can have those who are um, who focus mainly in, um, on the uh, issues of this life, and uh, on the one hand, and then uh, on the other but, hand, they or just like or something like, I think, investigate uh, concerning our day-to-day or -day, the experience about consciousness, emotion. Another, the very consciousness itself, so whether it come, the, uh, it come from previous continu continuation or not. What's the ultimate sort of cause? Right, it means just substantial cause. Substantial, no. uh, substantial cause. Uh, there must be consciousness or particle. If consciousness come from particle, from brain, from nervous system, uh, neurons, a neuro neuron. Then the neuron, there is sort of physical there, no matter how subtle. But consciousness is a mere <coughs> experience. So big differences. So it can be, or then uh, from because of the unphysical, unphysical Image. thing, produce physical, physical produce mind, whether possible or not. Further investigation. Then conclusion, the physical, because uh, of substantial cause, must be physical. So similarly, mind formless, that substantial cause must be a similar one. And that brings continuation, even just physical continuation of parent, parent's parent, uh, say, say about thousand, a thousand generations, then hundred thousand generations. Go like that at the beginning of the forming the world or the un whole universe. That also is to go further at the time of Big Bang. Time of Big Bang, also there is tremendous sort of what's it, the energy. Uh, so that energy comes from. Uh, there must be some physical. So continuation of this, also the substantial cause, continuation of substantial cause of this body, beginningless, very difficult to. Uh, because of the shock.
uh, to point to, a point to beginning, very difficult. So of course, different form, sometimes very subtle, and then combine different sort of particles, then new form, new form produce new form, new form, evolution way. And then eventually, because of the dissolution also more grosser level, uh, so the dissolve more subtle level, more subtle level, subtle level. Finally, a space particle. And also, it's come from space particle. Like that. That's a physical body. So, this body is the continuation of the because of that. Conventional, because of that. Substantial cause. Very difficult to, 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 to say beginning. So, consciousness. If consciousness must come, from similar sort of nature, then there must be continuation of previous consciousness. So this on the, on the level of uh, the conventional level. So when we, so some, be, some sort of thing is investigated about that level, then that touches previous life. And once previous life there, then uh, automatically there must be, uh, sorry, there will be, could be, right? next life, like that. So another category. So this is not only concerned about our dead race, because of the uh, consciousness or experience, these things. The very, the, the, for example, awakening state consciousness, dream state consciousness, deep sleep states con uh, Consciousness and consciousness at the time of faint. So here, uh, you know, we uh, last year, one the head of previous the, the uh, head of the Yellowhead sect. His name Losanima La Losanima, great scholar. Of course, the younger, younger, the younger generation, right? after we uh, came to India, uh, and then continues the study, then become Kishi, and then gradually become uh, head of the Yellowhead sect. Great scholar, as well as good practitioner. Very good monk. I, I, think, I think some of you, I think, already know that. Uh, some may not. So, you see, uh, after uh, he died, uh, a few days his body remained very fresh. Then I received the information, his body still remained very fresh. So then I asked the Delhi hospital where some equipment kept to, to, uh, in order to carry ex ex experiment on that body. So some machine available, also two people trained, uh, so I asked them, go there. And they immediately went to South India. Uh, then, I think the next, uh, I think almost, I think, two weeks, or more than 10, ten days, you see, they ex put all the wires on that, that body's uh, head, like that. So, you want to talk about this? Eighteen days. Eighteen days. Exact. Mm. So eighteen days means how many hours? Twenty-four hours. Eighteen. Huh? Four hundred. Four hundred thirty. Oh, four hundred thirty. So four hundred. Over 400 hours, you see, remain his body very fresh. Uh, so, the, up to now, the scientific scientist, no explanation. Uh, that's a fact. We already noticed that. So there must be some cause. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that lady sh shot. <laughs> Another one, yeah. <laughs> so, 
I think such things is good when you see some audience you feel sleep, then this kind of noise is good. <laughs> and also, you know, you see, when I give some lecture, long hour, some people, you see, feel sleep, uh, particularly the elder, elder people. A very strong faith, but not much interest to learn. <laughs> so sometimes they feel sleep. So you see, my what's called sneeze, sorry. Sneeze. Sneezing. Sneeze, sneezing. <laughs> like that. Or sometimes very helpful. <laughs> Wake up their mind, their sleep, like that. <laughs> so, so, investigation. Further investigation. Different mental state at the dream time, or deep, because of dream level, or deep sleep level, and faint level. Now, this kind of person. This kind of sort of occasion, he clinically dead. Body function cease, brain function cease. But still, body very much fresh. And as soon as some kind of meditation uh, cease, then some liquid come, and body immediately smell. So last week, one lama jiva. I think more than 10 days already. I, I did not get some information, but after I think one week, we sent people, same people. Uh, there, we sent. So what happened, I don't know. What did they do? What did they send to do? What happened? So they reach there. So that person still still remain there or finished. Ha. I see. So how many days? Hmm? Two weeks, huh? Hmm? Like that. So these are you see they are subject to further investigation. So in order to know different level of mind or energy. So even I think we, uh, the daily we experience sleep, but we do not know what's the real sort of state of mind at that, at that time, or what kind of mind at the sleep, deep sleep, like that. So these are different category of people who just content what they see, what they experience on conventional level. Some further investigation, so two levels. Within that, different levels. Then here, different school of thought, of, of religion, of spirituality come. So there are, uh, now, you see, the, uh, uh, one occasion in Amrish, now, now I think tea. Tea ready? So, stop. So I think let us start some question, question answer. Any question? Start from? We're just taking a minute oh, to yes, get the yes, microphones yes, yes. in place, but please. Or oh, the microphone. There is one question which has been uh, uh, yes. nagging my mind. The Nagarjuna's idea of Shunya, how does it give rise to compassion? The relation between oh. Shunya and compassion. Hmm? The Shunya, idea of Shunya, is it brings the, uh, hello, the, I think, the aim, the possibility of the cessation of suffering. So that immense help for compassion, because compassion is a desire to get rid of suffering of other beings. So once you see the possibility of cessation of the suffering, then the, your concern of their suffering really becomes something realistic. 
Otherwise, just wishful thinking. Clear? So that's the connection. So therefore, the, because Om Bunda Bosca said, the Shaba mind, Shaba minded sort of practitioner, first meditate on Shunya, then next Bhutichitta and the Karuna. Not that much sharp, sharp minded, then, then not much problem, not much sort of differences. <laughs> Just this practice, start practice of uh, compassion, Mahakaruna, mainly just faith, without knowing the target very clearly, convincingly, uh, understanding about Shunya, then more sort of conviction, S see clearly they are object, <laughs> then desire to achieve that. So that's the connection. Clear? Oh. Shunya and Anatta? Shunya is something absence. So what absence? The independent existence. So that we call Atta. No, no, no. Kaljata. Oh. So the, the independent self, see here, you see the independent self, the being or sentient being, which we have the feeling of self. Then also independent self in these, uh, because of the mindless uh, phenomena, we also use the call, there is sort of appearance of self existence that we call uh, independent self that also we call atma or something so that uh, does not exist so anatma anatma and both sort of the base anatma self or sentient being anatma of non inanimate objects oh, like that The Arya there was sort of verse. The, uh, yeah, the mm. That's all. Can't any jung yoba. Chick you da. Can't any jung yoba. Ten rama minu rose. What arises? Dikun rama meva te tana tani yama in. So that is rama te va tarmin tato. So what arises through dependence does not have uh, self. The Arya Deva is 400, 400 verses. verses. Uh, so in Arya Deva's 400 verses it says what uh, arises in dependence has no self um, entity, self uh, selfhood. And therefore uh, things So run, 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 do <coughs> whatever is lacking, uh, whatever is lacking, independent existence is the understanding of the selflessness. Oh, the Deva, the Chandakiti, they have another. Tell a Taja Shawanis, Taja Shawanis, Kanshin Govan with the Shana Rama Lebe Moor and Shin Te, Temeva and Tamebo. Then uh, in the commentary, uh, Acharya Chandrakirti's commentary to this same text, uh, he said that uh, what exists as independently is referred to as the self-nature, and the rejection of this self-nature is the understanding of emptiness. So, uh, atma or anatma, the subject of atma, so this, uh, the subject of atma, the anatma is a very vast and expensive Next? Yes? Yes. That lady? No. We'll move down across the room. <laughs> His Holiness, it's in line with what, I, what we just heard, that um, 
What is independent is the self, and the rejection of the self would lead to anatma. Is that, have we got it right? No. Yes, Really? So here um, we need to refer to, we need to have a very clear understanding as to uh, which, what reference of this word self is to be rejected and what reference of the word self is to be posited. Are Acharya Chandrakirti, who he so well explicated in his text, Supplement to the Middle Way, where he said that uh, seeing that all the uh, afflictive emotions, negative emotions, and uh, the resultant uh, suffering, they are caused by the grasping at the self. And then a yogi, seeing that, um, uh, seeing that this is the case, he rejects the self. So here, um, Acharya Chandrakirti tries to tease apart the two levels of selves, the self. One which is to be rejected, the independent self, and the other which is posited, which is posited on the conventional sense. So we need to be able to make a very clear distinction between the self on two levels. Now, when we uh, feel I, I want happiness, uh, that's mere I, that exists. Uh, then, uh, when that sort of feeling of mere I, uh, at that very moment, I appears something self-existent. Exist, right? self -existent. It appears like that. But at that moment, the feeling of I not grasping self-independent uh, self. independent existence then more sort of grasping sort of feeling. Then uh, our feeling grasping the appearances. No. Appearance, the independent, uh, independent uh, in existence. Uh, existence. Uh, sorry, independent appearances, then some kind of grasping. No. So then, um, just as the self appears to be inde uh, independently existent, then you try to um, try to approve this appearance and then grasp to this self existing independently. So the second level now, the previous level, just the feeling or recognize just the mere I. The second level, then more solid I. Now that's the wrong view. I think mm, uh, when you, uh, when you life you see the normal or happy moment, you feel I I is there I'm happy. Then someone disturb you. Then you so you develop some kind of oh why why he, why he or she you see, disturb me. Disturb me I, then more solid I. So when the destructive emotion uh, develop, the kasade, a strong self or kasoda, kasoda, no, solid I, almost beside body and mind, something not designated, but something solid, independent, that kind of appearance, and also have the feeling, I, he. He or she now harming I. I must retire it. I must as well the different, different myself. At that moment, then the, the feeling of I is much differences. The mere feeling of I and that moment's I, 
something different. So that's the basis of all the destructive emotion. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, you see that view, the uh, emptiness of that solid I, does not mean not exist of the uh, self. Uh, just self. Self is there, but not as uh, so that it, uh, as appears. Appears something. When you look at me, or oh, this Dalai Lama, so uh, you, you, uh, I mean, you can say that you, you are seeing Dalai Lama's body, Dalai Lama's perhaps voice, and also through my voice and physical sort of gestures, where you can, to some extent, you can read my mind. So, what is Dalai Lama now? You are seeing Dalai Lama's body, hearing Dalai Lama's voice, and some understand Dalai Lama's mind. But what Dalai Lama? Huh? One can make an attempt, of course one is not, maybe not successful, but uh, the real connectivity is the soul's connectivity with the soul, I mean the self's connectivity with the self. So perhaps I may explain you something here, I think. Uh, you know, one time in Ambrisa, uh, some uh, leaders and representative was, uh, and scholars of different traditions some interfaith sort of discussion. So there, I think one Sufi uh, practitioner, or I'm, I'm not, not very clearly remember, uh, or uh, possibly one Jews rabbi, you see, uh, put three questions. Uh, what is self? Number two, whether there is a beginning of that self or not. And third question, whether there is end or not about that self. So all major religious tradition, you see, making answer for these three questions. So first question, answer for first question, makes division, Buddhism and all non-Buddhism. Buddhism, anatma, so, no independent self. The rest of the non-Buddhist tradition, you see, they believe Atma, or soul theory, which is something like owner of this body and speech and mind. So, the owner and as the possessor. And the objects of possession. Uh, must be different. So, owner come from Kazota, within the... Uh, within the objects uh, to be owned. No, it is not sense. So the owner must be above. So that is soul. And then furthermore, those uh, non-Buddhist ancient Indian thought uh, who accept rebirth. So this body and voice which depend on this body and also mind, which entirely depends on this brain, new. Uh, so there must be independent self or soul, which take new life, new body. And next life, from this body, there must be something, go another sort of life, take another body. So there must be independent self. So that's the concept of soul. So according to Christianity, after death, body death. So the soul, I don't know, remain for the time being in the cause of coffin, at a good rest, or thoughtlessness, I don't know. <laughs> so then final judgment, final judgment come. Then soul, what kind of form, I don't know, raise and go 
heaven or go hell. And finish that. <laughs> so, uh, so the Buddhism self entirely uh, depend on body, speech, and mind. The combination of body, speech, mainly body and mind, combine these two can designate it self. No independent self. That's anatma theory. So designated self is there. Uh, designation, grosser level body and mind, subtle body and mind. So from previous life, come to this life, the subtle mind, subtle energy, subtle body. So the subtle body, subtle mind, no beginning, no end. Like that. That's the Buddhist. Uh, so, the division, uh, the answer for what's self. So, these two divisions. Then there is beginning or not. Those uh, tradition accept creator. Then there's a beginning. When creator creates, that's the beginning. Jainism and Buddhism, no creator. It's something like self-creation. So, uh, according to that, uh, what's the day? Causes of mind, or as I briefly used, touched, the continuation of mind, continuation of particles. So, no beginning. Then, whether there is end or not, uh, so, so, for answer for the second question, Jainism, Buddhism, uh, same, no beginning. Any Jain here? Any Jain scholar? No, she, no, received here. Oh yes, one Jain, no? So, according to Jainism, uh, since, you see, uh, no creator, so due to karma. So karma, uh, once you accept, once we accept karma, there must be creator of that karma. So if karma is beginningless, the creator of karma must be beginningless. There is no, not believe that there is a karma, there is a creator, but it's all a, a endless, beginningless, Sarsati, which is... Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, there is no such belief that there is a creator. This Sarsati is beginning, uh, no beginning, no end. It goes on. And so far, the question of karmas, thinking that karmas is a beginning, this itself is no beginning of the karmas either. So, it's a very complicated question there, actually. And um, it's very clear that in all three, even in the uh, Sankhya system, Krishna says very clearly that he is not actually the creator. Because he is not, then if he's a creator, then somebody else has created him. So this is a notion is uh, not clear. You know, this discussion and debate always carries on. But definitely the karma, uh, uh, the atma, there is a belief strong belief, Atma is there, not in terms of like an individual strong self that gives birth to I-ness, big I-ness. No. It is a uh, universal factor. In the universal factor, this Atma is completely pure, pure consciousness or pure. But then it is activated with the known, known uh, let's see, known living. It is there, two divisions there. One something Chetna, one is Achetan. In Sanskrit or Hindi, we have actually better understanding. When I translate it in English, there's always not exactly proper words in English that the idea can be conveyed. But the mixture of the two, which is living and non-living, so this relation between the two is causing a karma, what we term is a karma. Clear? 
So, so in any way, uh, not very clear, but 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 doesn't matter. You see, they, uh, you see, there's differences. There's different views. <laughs> so, the, uh, this is the answer for whether this begin or not. At at least for Buddhism, you see, the continuation of mind, uh, continuation of subtle energy, always there. Logically, that subtle uh, energy, subtle mind, you see. Uh, must be its own cause of substantial causes. So that means, substantial means like making uh, so uh, for example, if we uh, wish to make a clay pot, we need the substantial cause, which is the clay. And if we wish to make a golden uh, pot, then we need to, need to have the substantial cause, which is the uh, gold itself. But of course, uh, that uh, goes, as I mentioned earlier, at the time of Big Bang. At that time, no gold. Mm. But real substance with the particle already there. Then combination of some other sort of, because of the substance, where right? no. Some other substance. Then gradually, the gold nature. Then gradually, after millions, millions of years, eventually develop. So today's gold, sort of one article made by gold, the continuity must be of gold, previous sort of substantial cause. So similarly, this body's immediate sort of substantial cause is parents, semen, and kasa, blood, mm -hmm. or egg, like that. So that further goes uh, several generations. At the beginning of Big Bang, the substance already there, like that. Uh, but no matter how sort of subtle, subtlety, but still physical. So mind is something different. So very different, formless. And something like subtle energy. With combination of this body, the different level of mind develop, such as senses or organs. Uh, but all cognitive nature, that is the substantial thing. So any cognitive phenomena, its substantial cause must be that nature. So that's the reason. That's the logic. Right. Uh, we believe continuation. And then on top of that, there are people who actually remember past life. Isn't it? Hmm? So some may not be, I think, false. <laughs> But some, I think, very true. I met, you see, some, uh, I, I heard, you see, some Tibetan. Actually, I met some Tibetan who actually come from Tibet on the insisting, my home is India. And when they reach India, they insist, my home is South India. Then finally reach one of, one of Tibetan settlement. When parent, with the, that child, with the boy, reach there, then that boy actually led their parent to one monastery, and within the monastery, one, one building, one small house, he led there. Then when he reached that room, he said, now this is my room. Then he mentioned, in one box, my glass there. Then open it, glass there. Very clear. So such things happen. Then many years ago, one girl in, around Patiala, I actually met, clearly m expressed their past memory and the name of the past of the life's relatives. Another, another girl in Kampul I met. That girl, actually four parents, uh, her sort of expression of memory of past life is so convincing. The past life also at a young age die. So the previous life's parents are still there. 
So since new, boy, new girl's expression is so convincing, the previous two parents also accepted as in their girl. So one life for four parents. <laughs> like that. So such things happen. So we need more research work. Just to deny or impossible. This isn't too simple. I must investigate and try to find answer scientifically. Right? Answer. So these are a little bit mystery. So uh, ancient different sort of non-Buddhist tradition, uh, Jains and Hindus and, and many varieties of Hindu, we believe rebirth, reincarnation, isn't it? Oh, uh, like that. Oh, and then the third question, whether this end or not, uh, according to cre uh, those tradition who believe creator, uh, I think no, I don't know whether it's a permanent end or not, but when you reach heaven uh, uh, or hell, then remain permanently or not, I don't know. Then quite, quite troublesome in hell, permanently remain there. Oh, uh, I think better to, to uh, end, right? Even the, the self, I think, soul disappear, then better. Is it? So that I don't know. As far as Buddhism is concerned, uh, and also I think Jainism. Recently I was in Kasa Chukuti. One, one famous sort of Jain, uh, Sacred place in Palitana. Ka. Palitana. Ka. Palitana. Palitana. There are, uh, I think, at least uh, 20, 20 Jain masters and scholars. We had a sort of lengthy discussion. So many similar sort of ideas, similar view. Uh, so, so, so you see, they. Uh, I think most popularly, the Jainism and the Buddhism uh, have the answer, no end. Except in Buddhist tradition, in Buddhist school of thought, Vibhashik, there is description, end of life, end of mind. Buddha achieved Mahapari Nirvana, Sasha Tongminkasa, Kushinakar. That is really end of the being. Then Buddha no longer as a sentient being. So end. Like uh, the butter lamp, the seas, like that. But except that all you see, the Buddhist school of thought you see, uh, have the view there is no reason to end our subtle consciousness. Subtle consciousness remain continuously. At the, at the Buddhahood stage, subtle mind then fully function. All grosser level of mind sees. The subtle mind alone <coughs> act everything. So the mind, all knowing mind possible because of that subtle mind have special energy like that. So no end. That's that the Buddhist view. So some people feel more comfortable that that view. Some people, I think, may be different. So therefore, a variety of religions come on this planet. Even at the Buddha's own time or Nagarjuna's time, there are many uh, sort of a uh, different school of thought exist. Nobody tried to eliminate them. We live together as brothers and sisters. So through that way, India developed genuine harmony among the different religious traditions, as I mentioned uh, before, like that. So now that is the book. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so th this book, uh, Actual oral transmission, I received this book uh, 
1967 at Budgaya from one great as a learned symbol of the Buddhist practitioner. I think we can consider him truly Bodhisattva, wonderful person. So since then, I study, uh, contemplate, uh, contemplate on this book. Really wonderful. As far as Karuna is concerned, the sixth chapter and eighth chapter is marvelous, excellent. Then Shunya, the ninth chapter, mentioned. Oh, daily life. Daily life. See, I think these are the practice in the sense, you see, uh, now for, for example, knowing alphabet, A, B, C, D, how to practice. Just knowing and realize. That's the practice. Not a physical practice or verbal practice. These are simply awareness, mind. So, Pritya Sumbhad, knowing, uh, a knowledge, a mind, that provides our attitude towards everything, a little bit wider, a little bit open. So, as I mentioned before, we can see the reality much more clear, and also much, much less disturbances in our mind, because now, for example, when we look some negative thing, just closely, it, it appears huge, unbearable. If there is the same sort of, because of the accident, same sort of tragedy, look from a wider perspective, okay, that's very bad, very unfortunate, but okay. That kind of feeling, isn't it? So, but this is one, the way of practice is like that. Just Kazuta equipped our mind to look wider angle, wider Kazuta perspective. perspective. That's the practice. Then through that way, you get, firstly, immediately, you get some more stable mind. Something like a stabilizer survey. Stabilizer. stabilizer. Otherwise, the electricity sometimes very high. The voltage sometimes very high, sometimes very low. Stabilizer, you see, remain because of control, like that. When we have to contact some positive thing, too much, sort of. Uh, sometimes I criticize my American friend. You see, there are, you see, little good things happen. Oh, uh, overjoy, <laughs> shouting, jumping. Little bad things happen. <laughs> Demoralize. Like that, so it should not. I usually sit telling my American friend, should not do that. No. Very good things happen, should be better come. Very bad things happen, better to come. Isn't it? With sort of, with sort of, how should I acknowledge or knowing? Oh, it things happen like that, so then much better. Our body also, too much sort of overjoy. Too much sad, bad for our health. More we'll maintain better. So, Patitya concept really maintain our mind more because of stable, stability, stable. stable, stable, like that. Itself, nothing. Kasoda, Kasoda, na get a divorce yas ke mitwa. Kora view stay mitwa. So, Patitya Samutpat. Uh, it by itself, does, uh, we can't uh, talk about it being positive or negative, but it gives us a, a, a view as to how to look at the world. And then one, so, Pattita Samupant, the Nagarjuna, in a subtle way, subtle, subtle way of meaning, Pattita Samupant, just a mere designation. You see, that the actual meaning of Shunyata. Shunyata does not mean just a zero, but, but nothingness. Uh, shunyata is something there, uh, 
something always changing due to depend on many other factors. So there is no independent, absolute sort of existence. So if there is independent, sort of, sort of absolute existence there, then can't change, isn't it? Change means other factor influence that. So things are interdependent, then other factor can influence. If its existence is something independent, then other, other factor cannot influence. Clear? So the, uh, the Buddhism band concept gives me flexible. Flexibility. Flexibility. So that, that, that theory is my very, very favorite, favorite subject. So that, I think, best explanation about that is Nagarjuna. Because the first century, second century, second century, Nalanda. So Indian, I, I think the Indian brain, I think, always protected by, by this kind of sort of thing. So I think a special, special brain there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we Tibetan, quite good because cold climate. So without that, we can we can protect our brain quite quite uh, well. quite sufficiently. <laughs> now Rajiv, I think uh, without that and also without hair, <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I think much more difficult. <laughs> now I also now catching catching him like that. <laughs> so it is the way. Now, next question. Oh, yes. Yes. We received oral transmission 67 in Bulgaria. Oh. Is that Kuno Lama Rinpoche? Yes. Okay. Kuno Lama Rinpoche. Oh. He, I think, uh, he not only received, uh, received uh, oral transmission in many years ago in Kham area. Now, I can't remember the name of his guru. Uh, then he practiced this uh, text and also he gave Pasoda teaching to many people. And he advised me, please now give Pasoda teaching or explain this text as much as possible to others. He mentioned, and I promise, I think, and then also this is short text, isn't it? Uh, so one advantage is short text, so therefore it takes much less time. And then also another sort of advantage is short period, uh, so those sort of verses which uh, I have fuller knowledge, I can kasada, extendly you see, to explain. Those shaloka which I myself not very sure whether I understand properly or not. So then uh, I just read, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, that, like that, without much explanation. There is Tibetan saying, So the uh, Tibetan saying goes that it's like a, an old person uh, eating food. So that means those soft food, you see, eat the normal way. Those hard, either thrown or either just a solo. <laughs> so I do that. <laughs> Those verses uh, I can explain. Uh, uh, then I explain. Those hard, hard, sort of, uh, hard verses, uh, no. difficult verses, then either solo or just a little bit. Yes. Your Holiness, this is to do with um, what we understand to be from texts as the, as the true nature of the mind and our focus on uh, karuna in this discussion. If uh, the true nature of the mind is absolute purity, then it should logically go beyond uh, anything positive or negative. So if we are focusing on, and therefore, I suppose my question is, um, 
Therefore, by focusing on maybe Karuna or any of the other Brahmaviharas, is it possible to get a, a true realization of the absolute purity, you know, as opposed to an intellectual understanding? Or is the focus on Karuna and the other Brahmaviharas essentially to help us function better as a society and as a sort of a moral compass or as a moral anchor? Okay. That's the main point. I think the second part, as I mentioned earlier, my main effort to promote compassionate society, not talking about religion, not talking about faith, through education, through awareness, using our common sense, using our common experience, and then latest the scientific finding as I mentioned briefly before. So using these as a uh, reason to bring more awareness, the value of compassion. Now, particularly now these days, uh, many parts of the world, I think people really fed up about violence. So they, in order to reduce violence, just increase police force, or security personnel or military forces is, uh, I think, because of the negative, counterproductive. Uh, so the real peace must come from within. So we, everyone have that potential. So as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, firstly, through education, individual level, then family level, then community level, uh, that I think is very possible. I think entire six, over six billion human beings become religious minded. That's impossible. But it is possible, six billion human beings through proper education, uh, I think can be more compassionate, more peaceful people. That we can do. I feel like that. So that's one thing. Then the complete purification, these are individual business, not entire six billion human beings. And critics <laughs> So to your question, that uh, if the true nature of the mind is something absolutely pure, then it should transcend or it should be beyond good and bad. Uh, to this, there is a mention as to what constitutes virtue or good, goodness. In the Abhidharma text, uh, it speaks about different kinds of goodness. Um, uh, so, in, uh, so what His Holiness could recall so well is the text Abhidhamma Samuchaya. So in that text, there's the by Asanga. By Arya Asanga. There is, there's a mention of the, uh, the goodness or virtue uh, in different forms, like the ultimate virtue or the concomitant virtue, or anti-natural uh, virtue. And there is also uh, a positivity or a virtue, uh, which is called gentle, which means uh, something that uh, concomitant, something that uh, follows from another uh, uh, 
uh, which is similar to uh, another virtue. So virtue in the sense, a certain sort of motivation, then this motivation uh, in the level of, grosser level of mind, the subtle mind, the, when we say the pure, the pure, but the pure nature, no. they mainly refer subtle mind. So that level, all grosser level, already sees. So the uh, virtues, non-virtues, on the level of grosser level. But the subtle level, then beyond that kind of virtues, yes. but different the virtues. Yes. So when it comes to the, the mind on a very subtle purity, so that is uh, that transcends all the virtue, qualities of virtue, which is described on the cross level. So then, the kind of virtue that you ascribe to that level of the subtlety of the mind is something that is beyond the ordinary or the cross level virtues. So, more detailed explanation about subtle mind, the cross level of mind, in Guhi Samaja Tantra. There are also the Nagarjuna and Chandakirti and, and Kasajuti, Aryandeva, all made very good commentary about Guhi Samadha Tantra. So there are very good explanation about this different level of mind. And some practitioner, even our generation, some practitioner, I said they grow through meditation, through practice, the grosser level mind, kasoda, ma, weak, weakened, shukchun. They see that they experience the grosser levels of the mind becoming more the less obvious. Actually, at the time of death, the dis dissolution, grosser level of phenomena, uh, dissolve. More subtle, more subtle, more subtle, more subtle. So, and the uh, awakened state, uh, through meditation, through yoga, yoga practice, uh, deliberately, with effort, can can do uh, uh, dissolve, no. dissolution, dissolution of the cross level to the subtler, uh, subtler states. Subtler. to us again in our next life? The cosmic energies is the the cosmic energy is the same. So actually, uh, as to what it means by cosmic, what is the reference of this word cosmic, is what we need to consider. Because some people, they tend to speak about a very big or massive uh, Brahma, they speak of uh, something of that nature, and which is also unitary, monolithic. So if you, can see, if you think of cosmic in that sense, then this would be... Uh, there are different sort of, uh, different views, no, isn't no. it? There's, uh, I said, the Brahma, something, something... Uh, Very expansive and unitary. All existence is something. <clears throat> so we are part of that. So for the time being, we are separate, then ultimately, uh, we go back, uh, or we dissolve it, back into, uh, merge back. So that's one different sort of uh, view, or co concept, view. And Buddhism, I don't think you see, there is some kind of see, huge, or uh, the universal, some kind of energy. No, individual energy, individual. So ultimately, one individual self is creator one's own sort of world, like that. So combination of billions and billions of sentient beings, uh, you see, create their karma created the kasore, the whole universe. And then in certain period, because the universe based on more grosser sort of particle, so there must be end. 
So again, I, I think here, the external phenomena also, you see, come from subtle space to grosser body, like rocks, hills, or these waters, these things. Then ultimately, again, dissolve up to space. So sentient being, mental level, with mind, also, you see, the grosser level of this body, then dissolve more subtle liquid, heat, uh, I mean, solid, dissolve liquid, liquid, what's that? Dissolve. Yeah. Fire. I mean, oh, fire. Uh, fire, like that. No, 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 fire. fire. S chu. 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 Yes, yes. Oh, like that. Hmm? So then finally, clear light. Or oh, in Guhi Samanza, Tongboshi Sati. In Guhi Samanza, Tantra, there is the mention of the four experiences of the experiences of four empties. Four empties, different, different meaning. Four MD. According to Kala Chakra, another sort of kind of, another sort of, sort of different meaning of emptiness. And Madhimiga, one emptiness. And, and uh, the Gushi Samanza, four emptiness. So these are, uh, I said, it, sort of different meaning. Yes. So I think problem in the past, Western Buddhist scholars, they heavily depend on dictionary. So when word come empty, then they thought all empty is same. <laughs> Isn't it? That problem happened. New generation of you see, Western Buddhist scholar is because of entirely different. Firstly, they speak Tibetan, and also they study together with Tibetan. So their knowledge is really reliable, like Professor Thurman. <laughs> really, very good. Now he also he kept some kasoda. Yeah, yeah. The other day in Dharamsala, one day, very cold, then I, I asked him whether you see this bed, uh, some help for protection. Warm, warm. He says, very much. He <laughs> better like that. Yes. Now I think uh, I explain is something. Shivat haya marve. Kare. Four, four thirty or four thirty. Okay. Uh, so now the ninth chapter in the ninth chapter. Tama na. Wa. Kore division ro kaga kaga cha yungi arbata. Nanjo Bayan, Locheti, Common Common Namji Nursin. So that day in condition that as we pick that mental condition showers, Luna Lung Latina in Bina, so 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 long yare. Then a number of number to the church of Inish, Tamach Ramarangi, Kunjagi, Doyare, that Dodi was so to him constantly. Uma and uh, members. Dumda Kanda, Ribe, Chisam Chanaya, Gindu Meting Stuna, that the sound of the That Dub syndrome the Chomish of Yari. Saturday in the Nanjopaya, Locheti, Komokomanam, the Nursin, Dutan Chicche. Daya Nanjoba, Modara, Yamnu getting it to Mene, ya, Yamnu, Nimichil, Tuchil, Yamnu Yonzotia, Mavery. So then the text reads, 
and within the ranks of meditators, the lower in degrees of insight are confuted by the higher. So here, uh, now uh, the question is, now how would you, uh, how to really um, distinguish as to which of the philosoph philosophy, philosophical school is superior and the other inferior? So if you are to rank that on the basis of uh, the, uh, the sutras that they based on, then all of these uh, philosophies, they have their own respective sutras. For example, for Bhaskas, they have their own sutras, uh, the uh, sutras to be based on, and uh, likewise, Chitmatras and uh, Matimika school, they all have their respective sutras. So this is not the proper way of validating as to which is superior and the other is inferior. So now the only uh, possibility is by, uh, on the basis of the rationality. Superior is acceptable. Uh, which one is acceptable and other not. So that cannot be done uh, by judging whether one has uh, a support uh, of a uh, sutra or not. Instead, it must be done on the basis of uh, whether it is supported by a logical reasoning. So on that basis... <laughs> So uh, if you are to validate or if you are to uh, consider to the accept acceptability of uh, these uh, schools simply on the basis of faith, then we see that all these uh, different traditions, the, all these different schools, uh, they are deliberate. Not they are only within Buddhism, but also the entire world religion. You see, from the faith viewpoint, everyone you see, brings immense benefit to concerned follower. So, so we must respect. We can't say you see, this is uh, wrong. But then another level, investigation, then uh, within Buddhism, Buddhist school thought the Vibhashek, Sudhantik, uh, Chitta Mantra's viewpoint, and within Madhimika, some Madhimika sort of view. If we investigate, invest, investigate there is contradiction. <coughs> so, the, from the Hasuda Pranja from, side. From the viewpoint of the analysis. Oh, then, you see, some philosophy called viewpoint unacceptable because there is contradiction. So that is Nagarjuna, and particularly Nagarjuna and Kasachuti, uh, 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 Buddha Palita, and also Aryandeva, and Buddha Palita, and Chandrakirti, and Shantadeva also, you see, did that, <coughs> analyze. So then, even Buddha's own word, through analytical meditation, now this Buddha statement acceptable. This Buddha statement cannot accept literally. Uh, Buddha taught that sort of as a teaching for certain people, which more suitable that view. So like that. So Sajya Kalya Tangi Nichat so it is for this reason that the teachings even the teachings of the buddha can be classified into two one which is provisionally uh, the provisionally acceptable and the other which is definitive uh, literally acceptable and uh, um, the literally unacceptable so some text <coughs> a chitta mantra school of thought you see consider the kasota uh, so from some perspective, uh, the, uh, the, the teachings given that, uh, which are caused with the Chitamatras we point, they are considered as definitive. However, from the point of view of the Madhyamikas, even the teachings given for the Chitamatras, they are interpretable. They are not to be accepted literally. And uh, now, so on the level of the analysis, uh, yes. now on the level of the analysis, we see that um, the the higher schools or the understanding understanding of the same concept, 
the high schools have would supersede what the lower schools have, this one thing. And then another way of interpreting the same uh, stanza, which says that the lower in degrees of insight are confuted by the higher. So that is in relation to one individual practitioner. In, in, with respect to one in, single individual practitioner, as you, since that the, the practice or the spiritual realizations is not something that you can achieve within one, one day, so it needs time. So in time, you see that the practitioner evolves and the practitioner uh, enhances one's spiritual realization. So the, um, as one's spiritual realization grows in its quality, then it supersedes the spiritual realization that the, the, the same person had earlier. So that, I think we, everybody can, uh, can experience that. At the early stage, it's certain things rather difficult to visualize or to think. And even you see the certain concept, you see, unless you think seriously, you see, you may not uh, get the uh, uh, concept. No, very or, clearly. Uh, very clearly. Uh, very clearly. But then through, uh, through uh, the familiarization no. and daily basis, think, 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 then without much effort, it automatically, so for example, the, uh, the corona or bodhicitta, at, 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 at the beginning, difficult to get actual some kind of experience. Then uh, time passes, uh, so that continue, con continue, continuously Fem effort, then gradually the feeling becoming stronger, stronger, stronger. So the late experience of later part can uh, sort of see them. Okay. Can, can override the experiences that you had in earlier stages. And understanding also is similar. Perhaps or Shunya. Uh, early, uh, now for, for example, my own sort of case, uh, when I was in Tibet, although I already have keen interest about the Madhimika philosophy, Madhimika viewpoint, uh, but then, just to the sort of what's the Kasota, Meba? Yes. Just, there is uh, admi admiration in this that this is good. Uh -huh. Then, uh, my age, at that time, I think 20, around 20, up to 24, uh, final examination, then come to India as a refugee, then continuously I study. And a meditation, analytical meditation, at this point. And then my age, around 30, begin to get some feeling about this Shunya. Some feeling. Of course, still not yet sort of kasota, kasota, fully, fully developed. Oh. But then, uh, gradually, I think my age, perhaps I think, around, I think, late 50s and 60s, the concept of Shunya is something living and very familiar. Uh, and occasionally, when some problems, I remember that, very helpful. So, so that immense help to get the feeling of Nirvana, salvation not through text, but through understanding about shunya. Oh, that brings the, so the idea or conviction, possibility of cessation. Immense help. Cessation of what? Cessation of suffering, cessation of ignorance. Mm -hmm. huh? The ignorance, the subtle, subtle level ignorance, the ultimate ignorance, just the opposite of Wisdom, wisdom which understands shunya, just direct opposite that wisdom. That's the ultimate ignorance. Like that. So, and then bodhicitta. To me, the understanding or some awareness 
about Shunya, immense help to develop uh, altruism. Uh, so in, uh, when I received this uh, Shantadeh also text, I have sort of great admiration about altruism, but also I have the feeling, oh, that's very difficult, that kind of feeling. Then time passes, eventually, now that infinite altruism we call bodhicitta, now something quite close. As soon as I wake up in the morning, immediately remember about altruism. And then some kind of pledge, rest of my day, uh, you see, I will carry according to that sort of spirit. spirit. That spirit. And that immense help. So, now, for example, the last, last year, the later part of the year, almost, I think, five, six months, my program continuously, no one week rest, continuously, but no feeling of tiredness. So mainly, the, the sort of, I mean, mentally, my body, speech, mind, totally sort of what's the dedicated well-being of sentient being, infinite sentient being. So then, every day, after the evening, I have the feeling, oh, I fulfill my body and speech. Body, <laughs> of course, not labor, <laughs> helping other, but give smile. Uh, so people get at least for temporary sort of kind of joy. Uh, joy. joy. Then speech, talk, at least is some, some help. Then my motivation, totally dedicated well-being of other. So then, uh, day pass, I feel fulfilled. So that really helps is it, to keep freshness and purposeful life. So blood pressure, no problem of blood pressure. No problem of the stress. Like that. So that's my own experience. So you all, everyone, have the same potential. So if you make effort, you get that. So don't think, oh, Dada is something very special because reincarnation of jealousy is nonsense. Wrong. We are the same human being. Oh. So uh, have sort of conviction. We are the same. Why not? If Dharma get that kind of sort of other certain sort of mental peace, then why not we? Uh, we, we can. So that, that must be. I think that's, the, for me, I think the, the, the Kasota, good way to teach. If God remained there, then give us some kind of instruction. We just, as a creature, and look at that. From Buddhist viewpoint, I'm Buddhist. Uh, for me, not good. But for millions of other people, concept of creator is immense benefit. Very good. So I, I always respect them. I always admire them. But as far as my own practice is concerned, Buddhist teaching is much more encouraging. I also have a Buddha seed. If I try, how I become Buddha. So same, same level. What do you think? <laughs> so we should, I think the concept of Buddha nature, Tathagata Shindaya, Sukata Shindaya, Tathagata Garva, I think, Tathagata Garva, Sukata Shindaya, I think two words. So these concept, I think, immense benefit, particularly when those people who demoralize, discourage, and mental state hopelessness must think these things. And also think eons, eons. Some tantric sort of teaching says within three years you can, you can, be, you can become Buddha. So that gives us 
false hope. Not good. Think, eons, eons, eons. Then real determination develop. No matter what the difficulties, what obstacles, it doesn't matter, 100 years. Then take next life. Now go that way, eons, eons. That really a uh, source of inner strength, isn't it? And dedicate one's life for well-being of others, sincerely. Yeah? Day passes, you get the feeling of fulfillment. So the, my favorite sort of prayer, so long space remain, so long sentient beings suffering remain, I will remain in order to serve. This Chanda Devas in the book, she mentioned that. Wonderful. That is uh, uh, that source of sort of strength. Isn't it? Marve, what do you think, Professor? What do you think? <laughs> Lifestyle is different, of course, different. <laughs> but mental level, I think we all this can be that's what it, this same practice. I think we can we can do. Next, well, then now I forget what what is main subject. Oh yes. Uh, therefore, Buddha himself is he stated, Oh, my follower should not accept my teaching out of devotion, out of faith, but rather through investigation and through experiment. So this is, I think, a very scientific way, isn't it? I think. So about around, I think, 25 years ago, when I developed or desire a dialogue with modern scientists, uh, some my American friend, a Buddhist, so some uh, gave me warning, science is killer of religion, so be careful, contact with scientists. Then I thought, oh, the Nalendra tradition, Sanskrit tradition, uh, you see, the investigation is more important than just relying on Buddha's own word. So, no problem. So, for me, you know, you see, many Tibetans, of course, always offer mandala. Uh, so, I do not believe the Mount Miru and these things. Still, I'm Buddhist. <laughs> I'm, I, 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 I do not accept you see, the, the sort of mental, uh, you know, mm, Mount Miru and some sort of different uh, these things. Uh, I do not believe that. Uh, maybe some other planet, maybe, but at least on our planet, it does not exist. Uh, so some, Abid for example, Abhidhamma Gorsha, the Basuband, so I think, uh, really, I think I try to explain very detailed <laughs> how many miles you say, <laughs> but these are useless. <laughs> and at one time, I I I I, 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 I joked one great Tibetan scholar, the Basubant in Abhidhamma Karika, the size of moon and sun, except. Except um, that they, uh, he sta he mentioned that the difference in size between the sun and the moon is just half a yojana. Half a yojana is very small. Uh, so then I jokingly told that he's a scholar. Perhaps uh, the Osuband, his naked eye, is a try to look size of the moon and the sun. And he felt our oh, sun a little, little bigger <laughs> than moon. <laughs> so he described passing of the chest. So then on the basis of this, so he sort of this jokingly uh, shares this with other people that uh, it is on this um, basis of his observation through his naked eyes 
of the size of the sun and moon that he described the, 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 the difference in size as just half a yojana instead of the, the reality. So these are really nonsense now. There's no problem. Uh, these are nothing to do with teaching of Four Noble Truth. The teaching of Four Noble Truth is very, very realistic. Now, in order to know the later part of Two Truth, secession, uh, there now concept of Shunyata is very, very important. With, so the first teaching, Buddha Dhamma Veel, taught Four Noble Truth. In order to know the, the Four Noble Truth fully, the second Dharma wheel, uh, the Panjaparamita Sutra, very necessary. The Panjaparamita Sutra explains about Shunyata, about subtle way of interdependency, Pachitsampa. Then, third Dharma wheel, Buddha stated about our nature of our mind. Then, further explanation that in Guhi Samadha Tantra, make because of that, distinction, grosser level of mind, subtle mind. So, study is very, very important. Just to pick, pick up one uh, text and read and a full of knowledge about that is not sufficient. We must read all these different sort of because of that text and study different sort of school of thought. Immense benefit. About about the uh Samaband, we must know the concept or interpretation of Chitta Mantra. Then we, we will know, the, we, we, we get better knowledge about the Madhimika's view. And within Madhimika, Prasankika and the Sudhantik, they are debate. Uh, so when we study seriously about this debate, then you can get the deeper sort of understanding about the Prasankika view. So therefore, the Prasankika, the uh, Chandakirti's Umatsikse Khasa, Umatsikse Mindi. Umatsikse, what was Sanskrit word? Oh, that, you see, that text, uh, available in Tibetan translation, not available in Chinese. So, because not available in Chinese, so no translation in Japanese or Vietnamese like that, or Korea. So I, I sort of suggested some my Chinese friend, as well as some Japanese. Uh, <laughs> eventually, and we already thinking or mentally some kind of vision, making plan, translation. The Sanskrit available, dua, dua, or. So Sanskrit, original Sanskrit text and there. Then very good translation in Tibetan, there. So much easier to translate into Chinese. I think English already there or not? English in different pieces. Different pieces, no? French, German, English. So that text is very, very essential. Then that made a very clear distinction. Prasankiga, uh, or another word, I think they Vabebika's uh, view about Madhimega and uh, uh, Chandrakirti's view or Buddha Palita. Very clear. Unless we study that, maybe confusion like that. So it is, I think those ancient translators, Tibetan translators, uh, really great. And that all these things due to Shantarakshita from Nalanda. He personally, you see, invited to Tibet. Shantarakshita, great master of Madhimika philosophy and also great logician. All his writing, 
그래서 he always use logic. 좀 생각해야 돼. Lose. I always uh, used logic and reasoning to mm-hmm. establish the point. So we, as his student, I always proudly to state, we are a holder of the holder of pure lineage of Nalinda tradition. So we very much emphasize the using logic. So therefore, the when I give teaching to Chinese Buddhist, uh, historically they are elder student of Buddha. Uh, we are much younger. The Buddhism reached Tibet eighth century, seventh century, eighth century. And China, I think third century, third fourth century, isn't it? Third fourth century. So they are elder student of Buddha. So whenever I give some lecture on Buddhism. To Chinese Buddhist, because they are elder, so I always resp- oh, so express my sort of respect to them. Then, meantime, I, I jokingly telling them, as far as knowledge is concerned, junior student not bad. <laughs> because the Acharya, the Shantarakshita, and Kamala Shila. Particularly at the time of Kamala Shila, there, is, there was debate. Chinese meditation, Buddhist meditation, and Kamala Shila. The Kamala Shila emphasis study wisdom is very essential. Analytical meditation is very essential. The Chinese meditation emphasis single-pointed meditation is enough. Is more important. So some debate. Took place. Then finally, uh, the Kamala Shila win. So, last now, that is similar law because don't touch the same way. More than thousand years. More than thousand years. Tibetan tradition follow strictly Nalan tradition, study, investigation. So, that I think brought. O- new opportunity meeting with modern scientists. Almost equal, equal way. As far as matter is concerned, external matter is concerned, their finding, their knowledge is marvelous. Uh, although Buddhist sort of, uh, literature mentioned about particles and these things, uh, but still we learn many useful things from modern scientists. And then inner science is concerned. They found very useful ideas, very useful knowledge, and also some kind of new technique to check, to examine our mind and, and emotion, and particularly how to tackle emotion. So you see, some kind of uh, I think the joint effort eventually, I think, was very helpful to bring complete, completion, right? complete. complete. Uh, modern science mainly matter. The ancient Indian science mainly mind. So mind is there. So once these both uh, together, then the scientific knowledge, then fuller. External matters, internal world, I think, I think very useful. So all these happen because of the great master of Nalanda institution. So therefore, I usually call I, myself as a son of India. Isn't it? Something like that. And whenever I met South Indian, and I usually sit and mention, oh, South Indian's brain is something very special. I think Nagarjuna and many of these scholars, I think most of them come from South India. <laughs> like that. So therefore, uh, I think, oh, then also I want to share with you, uh, two years, 
So I notice now Buddhism can be divided three parts: Buddhist science. Buddhist philosophy or concept, like Patita Samubandha, that's Buddhist philosophy and also concept of Maria. Yes. Oh. Then Buddhist religion. So Buddhist religion is uh, meant for Buddhist practitioner. But Buddhist science of mind, uh, Buddhist concept is something universal. So academic subject. So I never sort of I never make sort of effort propagating Buddha Dharma. When I give lecture in a non Buddhist country, I always stress you should keep your own tradition, traditional faith, mainly Judo Christian faith, and to some extent Islam. So it is much safer and better to keep that. Whereas like Tibetan and Mongolian and also I think uh, many Chinese traditionally Buddhist and Korean <coughs> and Japanese and of course these Buddhist countries like that uh, it is our traditional religion so better to keep that. Oh, I have one sort of nice story. You know, in early 60s when uh, Tibetan refugee community uh, freshly so arrived re, uh, refugee, very difficult. So many of them, there's no other way to earn but just simply road, road, was a road worker, no. road work. So very difficult, especially you see some of those young, some of these Tibetan who come from the western part of Tibet, they also brought with their family, including their children. So at that time, children suffer very much. Climate change and because of malnutrition, you know, these things. So one Tibetan family, uh, the husband, Tibetan official, lay official. Uh, then the, the father, official, passed away. And mother, uh, he, I mean his wife, and I think two or three children remain. So very difficult. So then some Christian missionary, uh, at that time, of course, many Christian organizations, you see, they provide food and milk and many, many things. So uh, the early period, of course, beside the government of India should help, you see, the Christian organizations help, immense help, very, very helpful. So that family also received some help. So then I think 63 or 4, around that period. She came to see me uh, uh, and she told me uh, her stories. Then she told me uh, uh, the uh, uh, Christian missionaries, you see, not only help them because uh, of the uh, other facility, but also, you see, uh, take for to school her children. So then he mentioned, so therefore, the Christian missionary is very, very kind to her. So for this life, she will become Christian. Now next life, she will be Buddhist. <laughs> so what is that? This is a clear sign of confusion, isn't it? Uh, so it is much better to keep one's own tradition. Then also, you see, uh, one Polish uh, one lady, very old lady, firstly, she joined Theosophy in Madras. Uh, then, then eventually, you see, since 56, uh, we become very close friend. So later, she become Buddhist. But at the time of her sort of the death, away, no, <coughs> nearly death, uh, in her mind, Constantly, you see, occur the concept of creator, God. So that also signs of confusion, isn't it? So it is much safer to keep one's own tradition. So I never sort of propagate Buddha Dharma in different sort of country. But, you see, they, as far as Buddhist science, in order to develop more compassionate mind, 
more compassionate person. Uh, I always was telling, uh, as a secular ethics, then promotion of religious harmony, I always do. And recently, I was in Vancouver, and then finally, Kasaji uh, Kasa, Quebec, Quebec, Montreal, uh -huh. a serious discussion, how to introduce uh, the compassionate ethic in modern education system. So there, when I was, actually they invite one group, one group of one organization invited me, that mainly at that time, they carry some teachers training. Many uh, colleges and universities in Quebec area gathered, I think, a few hundred teachers. They carry teachers training. They, they mainly, you see, without touching religion, the how to introduce, how to teach uh, children or a uh, student the, about the importance of compassion, moral ethics, so like that. So these are, I think, from Buddhist science or Buddhist concept, you see, can make some contribution. That I do. Otherwise, uh, I never used to trying to propagate Buddhist Dharma. Unlike Professor Thurman, these are exceptional. <laughs> now, how, how many years? Buddhist? Yes. Oh, almost 50 years. 50 years. So when we first came to Dharmasala, and in, in in 60s, uh, 64. Uh, 1964. 64. Then he monk. Mm. Very, very thin and very tall monk. Mm, goes like that. <laughs> and then eventually he became professor. Uh, very good. I think because a professor in Columbia University. Right? Yeah. Uh, so these are exceptional. So individual, according to their mental disposition, Buddhism is most suitable. Buddhist way of approach is m m sort of most suitable. And then individual sort of freedom, isn't it? Like that. So, so is that point. Buddhist science, Buddhist sort of philosophy, Buddhist religion. Then the two things are, can be universal and part of academic subject. That's good, isn't it? Like that. Good. Good night. See you again tomorrow. <laughs>